Wow. I believe we have Benjamin Friedman here. Benjamin, are you there? I'm here. All right, good. Sorry about that. Um, we've had a day to think about it. We've had a day to look and find out what happened. Now we're hearing that Donald Trump said that uh, he wants to curtail some training missions with South Korea. What, what's going on with this? Well, uh, the White House uh, made a great effort to promote this uh, communique, this joint communique that we put out with the North Koreans, uh, sort of billing it as a uh, massive, uh, as the president said, comprehensive agreement. It's not. It's a, a basically a page-long document about future intentions. And uh, the president said in his press conference over there that he'd suspended military exercises, uh, or war games, as he called them, with the uh, with the South Koreans uh, as part of what we would do to, to advance diplomacy. Uh, and that has a lot of people upset who think that uh, we shouldn't have done that in the absence of a concrete commitment from the North Koreans, something more than saying we'll work towards denuclearization in the future. And then beyond that, we had Mike Pence apparently saying that we hadn't actually suspended exercises, and it seems that we have, so there's been a bit of confusion about that. So uh, you don't have to look too far into history to have people criticizing President Obama for throwing up the idea of talking to dictators. Why now is it a good idea to talk to these dictators, and what about all the problems with appeasing dictators before? What's going on? Well, uh, there's certainly a, a lot of uh, hypocrisy uh, from people who... Uh, but the Iran deal was uh, anathema, and we shouldn't be talking to the mullahs, as they would put it, uh, who now think it's okay to, to uh, negotiate with Kim Jong-un. Uh, I think the big difference is that the, um, the North Koreans uh, had shown that they have nuclear weapons. Uh, the Iranians had not. The North Koreans had uh, proven that they were close, at least, to having missiles that they could put nuclear weapons on that could hit the United States. So I think that, uh, in large parts, we were driven by their... Uh, technology and their uh, progress and their program, and also by the, the South Korean president pushing us to negotiate President Moon. Yeah, but c comparing the Iranian deal, the Iranian deal, the Iranians gave up quite a bit. In this deal, it doesn't look like North Korea gave up anything. Right. So uh, the person here is, is that here there's not a deal yet. Uh, there's some intention, maybe. Uh, really, we're beginning the negotiating process with a statement uh, that's being hyped as a deal itself. But uh, the North Koreans, presumably, were there to be an actual treaty-like deal, we would agree to something around what the Iranians agreed to in terms of uh, an inspections regime with international inspectors that would show that they'd actually got rid of weapons, uh, whatever weapons they agreed to get rid of, because I think it's pretty unlikely that they'll agree to complete denuclearization. Yeah. Uh, there was a story in the Wall Street Journal this morning that alludes to the fact that Donald Trump got the idea to suspend military training from Vladimir Putin. Is that possible? Well, the, the North Koreans uh, previously, uh, when they were uh, talking to the South Koreans, had requested, I believe, uh, complained a lot about the military exercises. And their friends in both China and uh, to a lesser extent Russia had said uh, we should do that, that we should uh, suspend the exercises. And we did. We, we suspended them uh, previously, at least delayed some exercises to help the, uh, give a boost to the South Koreans' diplomacy during the Olympics and so forth. So uh, now we've suspended them again. So whether or not it came directly from Putin, I don't know, but it's something that the North Koreans wanted and that their semi-proxies were also behind. How... how extraordinary is it that we suspend our military training in a situation like this? Well, uh, we've done it before uh, a few times when we were in, in talks with them, uh, so I don't think it's, it's that extraordinary. It, it has a lot of people upset, uh, but I think that in the United States uh, or in Korea, we have such massive military superiority vis-a-vis -vis the North Koreans that I'm not worried about it in terms of creating an opportunity for them or shifting the military balance power, I think we're in pretty good shape. Of course, it hurts military readiness a little, but I think that's, it's a, at least temporarily, that's an okay sacrifice to make for uh, a chance at diplomacy. Ben, if I can steal you for 30 more seconds, what are you worried about sure. with this? 
Well, I'm worried about uh, things going off the rails. I'm worried about the uh, excessive expectations that we are building uh, around what the North Koreans are going to do, and that the disappointment uh, for the White House and for the public here might lead to uh, relations plunging back into crisis mode. I think even if we don't get a deal with the North Koreans, we should keep in mind they're in pretty good shape in that uh, we have the ability to deter them. I don't think they're going anywhere, even if they have nuclear weapons. It's it's not a great situation, but it's okay, and uh, it's not a crisis. I think it's important to keep that in mind. Benjamin Friedman, Defense Priorities Foreign Policy <laughs> Fellow. Thanks for your time, Benjamin. Uh, let's check uh, traffic and weather. Tim Weiland in the St. Louis Closet Company Traffic Center. Tim. <laughs>